What's going on people? Shaka here, back with another video. Sorry it's been a while. So I just wanted to go over some like tips and tricks and things that we do um, to get blasters the way they are. We do have a prototype Apache that we are testing. So it no longer screws together in half. Uh, what it does is it actually screws down at the front. So if I take apart it comes with a little key, I've misplaced mine. Uh, these aren't for sale yet, still a while off, so more testing, more prototyping. Um, but that's pretty much it right here. Basically there's your nozzle, it's just like a whole one piece in there. 1000 CST, which is equivalent to about an 80 weight. Um, a little drop of lube on there. And then I like to go just a little bit around the insides and don't squeeze, just smudge around. Take your nozzle. Put a little bit on the inside, a little bit on the outside, and then sort of, you know, just lube it up. And then with the other Apache, just unscrew threads just above the two O-rings, um, and the cap basically screws down onto that, and there's a little O-ring inside that. Lube that up as well. Uh, make sure your spring's in. And then drop it down. Make sure she's tight. You might want to use a little bit of um, like blue or purple Loctite, just a drop, otherwise you won't get it back out. You know, just to keep that front face in. We're yet to test, I'm not using any Loctite on this because it's testing whether you need it or not as well. Um, so far so good. This one's only really about 6,000 rounds deep. It's a 10 to one build, so cool. Aztec gearbox. While I'm here, touching base on these Apaches, Different rubbers give different seals, different T-pieces, different O-rings for spacing. Obviously, I would recommend and prefer the Aztec adjustable T-piece. So we went ahead and designed a T-piece that allows you to make those micro adjustments to get the perfect seal. Um, all the way out and all the way in is eight mil. Um, so you've got anywhere between there. Just bear in mind that the further and forward or you know the closer back you bring it, it may cause mag alignment. In saying that, you still do have to put, so for this one here I've got three O-rings with the Aztec rubber on it. And so what I do is, I instinctively know because I've built this so many times, this particular setup, that I'll basically, that's all the way in, put my thumb there and then I'll do one full rotation. And that's half a mil. Uh, one full rotation which is half a mil. So half a rotation is um, 0.25. So just bear that in mind, it's only moving it ever so slightly. It's not, you know, adjusted four or five mil out and well, all of a sudden my mag doesn't line up. That's where you need to start spacing it with the rubbers. Um, and like I said, different rubbers give different sort of um, effects. Uh, so for me, for example, the Wells rubber gave the best accuracy, very consistent on the Apache Wells T-piece or our T-piece but I found that it lost a little bit of FPS compared to say an Aztec rubber or say a war interest rubber. So this one here is a war interest LDX rubber, which for me, they're, they're the easiest right now to tune out like a double shot, you know, triple shot, things like that. Um, rubber durometer plays a huge factor in popping gels. So for instance, this rubber here is not too hard, it's not too soft. That feels to me probably like a 90 durometer. We've worked our way up from 60, 70, 80 durometer all the way to our latest rubber, which is a lot longer than a standard Aztec rubber. So standard Aztec rubber, 70 durometer, and then we've got 90 durometer long versions of these. So they feel identical to a war interest rubber in terms of the durometer of them. Um, they are a lot thinner than a war interest rubber, the, the fitment of a TP. So you can see that's got a little bit of slack here, um, but these window wiper style, you know, curved tips basically hit the back of the bucking inside the T-piece, the bucking, um, and create that perfect sort of air seal. So we might drop these from say a 90 durometer, maybe back down to an 80 durometer. So they're still harder than an Aztec rubber, but they're in between sort of thing. Um, so we'll keep playing around with that sort of stuff, making, you know, trying to dial them in and make them ideal. Um, the war interest rubber being a lot wider than an Aztec rubber, 
only just fits. You got a little bit of slack in here. So what I do is, say if I was using a warm interest rubber on an Apache, I'd basically pull this rubber off. So what I do is I take a little bit of heat shrink, I scuff up the tip of the Apache on, on the metal, I glue down some heat shrink and I, you know, blow torch it. And then over the top of that heat shrink, I'll scuff up that heat shrink with a bit of sandpaper, scuff up the inside of this nozzle and then put the warm interest one down. So for that, I would take away a rubber being that it's a little bit longer. So if we sit it right on top of the Aztec rubber, you can see it's a little bit too far forward. Um, and we might start playing around with mag alignment, things like that if we go too far. So I use two O-rings. Two O-rings and it's pretty damn close. And then from there, I'll just micro adjust this T-piece to suit. Um, so by doing that, I don't manually do that by putting the spring behind the nozzle and pushing it forward and doing all that jazz. I've sort of done so many now that I've just got an eye for it. Before they actually go on, I take like a, like a Phillips, like that. And what I do is, I just run it around a belt, belt sander, ever so gently, just around the edges, not on the front face, just around the edges, so that it ensures that it's not gonna rub on the inside of the T-piece. We don't want any rubbing, rubbing on the inside of the T-piece because it, it will cause like um, FPS loss, it will cause like feeding issues, um, the rubber will stay for the Apache will stay forward in some severe cases. Um, and that all comes down to gearbox alignment. So gearbox is sitting in a receiver with all the pins through it, T-piece goes up, the outer barrel holds it, you know, holds your T-piece in and the way it sort of sits up against the gearbox. Now some gearboxes have wider and narrower front sections on the front of the box. So for instance on here, our T-piece has very minimal slack. So it is held almost directly center. It's sort of forcefully directly center. A retro arms, I actually take one of the O-rings from that we supply with the Apache and I put it around the actual ridge here and I just tack it down with one drop of glue either side. And once it goes in, it then stabilizes its up, down, left, right movement a lot better. Um, car, most cast gearboxes, there's a lot of slack up and down on these T-pieces. Um, same with the V2 T-pieces, it's identical in terms of fitment. MK hybrids, I actually take this collar off and I use washers. So nylon washers that I space angle of engagement with. I actually use those to basically go around the actual T-piece. So you do need to dremel it out just a little bit. Um, generally it's about two of them and then I just adjust the rubber accordingly to where I need it to seat properly. That's only in the MK Hybrid, but in the MK V2, these T-pieces go in nicely. It works quite well. LDX boxes, I actually take the capping off as well and run it directly into the gearbox, just so it sits nicer and it, and it still keeps your mag alignment and things like that. I believe with the Aztec rubber, it's four or five O-rings. Um, in an LDX box. Nonetheless, they do work. In most cases on an LDX, I'll use the standard LDX T-piece. Um, it's just easier in the long run and there's nothing wrong with an LDX T-piece. So that's going over sort of some things about the Apache. If you're getting a double shot or a triple shot, you need to bring your rubber forward to seal off the T-piece a bit more. And you also need to make sure that you don't glue your barrel like halfway down because it will allow gels to go up and in. You have to make sure that your barrel is all the way back or else it's impossible to tune out those double feeds and triple feeds. Low FPS is just, I'm talking like a quarter of a turn of this at a time to bring it back closer. If you go too far, you'll lose your feeding altogether. So it is a bit of a balancing act. Once you sort of get your head around them, there are quite a few techs getting around now that have got the gist of the Apaches and are tuning them brilliantly. You know, that, that's always good to see. So that's just touching base on the T-piece. This is just simple advice that I'm hoping can help somebody. Pistons. So with the Aztec piston on the inside of here, I'll mix a little bit of JV weld, basically fill up these channels that are on the inside that the rack actually sits in. Go ahead and get rid of all your excess. I like to use a little toothbrush, an old toothbrush, and just brush out all the excess. You don't want the excess drying splintering off and going through your gearbox. That's if you've used too much epoxy. So just be careful of that. Uh, like I said, AOE, uh, I don't use the polyurethane pads on the back of these unless it's a cast gearbox. Um, a cast gearbox, polyurethane padded, 
radius it, then short stroke your gears down to your port, and it's as less stress on the front of a box as possible. You need to do all three in conjunction. Radius your gearbox, polyurethane pad, even if it's a cylinder header or an Apache, put an extra polyurethane pad on the back. That will adjust your voluming, so just be careful when you're short stroking down to your port. Um, you may, if you're already right on the on the right port without a polyurethane pad, you will have to replace your cylinder and recorrect your porting. Um, some people just port through short stroking. I've always liked to bring my port back, my, my short stroking, so that it comes just back, sort of halfway over the port, and then goes back down. So the piston not coming back as far and slamming the front of a cast gearbox all the way, uh, radiusing and polyurethane pad all go together hand in hand to make a cast gearbox last for a long, long time. Bit of JB weld, let it set, it takes a full 24 hours, so you do have to be patient with that. Aztec bushings or any bushings in any gearbox, no matter how tight the fitment, I like to use a little bit of JB weld. Make sure you use a little bit of Loctite. Um, I like to use blue Loctite in the thread of my piston heads or else they will come undone. So just make sure that, that you actually are pretty generous of that and you crank it right down nice and tight. I like to space my, my AOE purely for the fact of, of nylon washers. I just prefer that than gluing pads to the back of my cylinder heads and things like that. Aztec adjustable trigger. So you can see here, it's an Aztec adjustable. Leviathans, are, the optical Leviathans are amazing. I cannot fault them, not a problem. 250 bucks, it comes with a CNC trigger. You got your MOSFET. Um, it's Bluetooth to anything iOS, Android. Uh, it has multiple solder pads on the inside of the upper of this of this um, of this board here, um, so you can wire in you know all kinds of electronics into it. You can program how much power it sends to your mag terminals and for how long. You know the phenomenal MOSFET. If you haven't got your hands on one, get your hands on one. It'll change your life. It's they're, they're really really good. The old Leviathans were good as well, but the switches used to break. And when you're building you know 40 50 60 70 rps builds nearly every day it becomes a bit of a problem some people don't like optical because you can't use too much grease uh to be fair like this is probably all the grease you should be putting on very very light grease um, you don't need copious amounts because it just gets all on your teeth and it'll flick out all through the gearbox it's not they're not needed they're not slow moving gears these things are very quick they need a nice sticky grease, a very thin coat, and it'll stay on for, for a long, long time. And every time you open your gearbox, it'll look nice and clean. It won't look covered in everything covered in grease. The Aztec tender ones. So what I do is I take those two screws out. I pull the middle shaft out. Once again, bit of JB weld. Scuff it up with the Dremel, the two faces of the metal. Bit of JB weld, bit of JB weld down where the grub screws are and then screw it in, let it set for 24 hours. Uh, from there, you're good to go. Short stroking. Short stroking, I like to short stroke off the pickup, especially if you're using a tappet. Um, as you manually cycle the gear, you know, you basically want the tappet to be pulled back, a gel to load up into the chamber, and then the piston to still be coming back and release. Um, I've always had nothing but problems of feeding, short stroking off the back. Um, and if you are gonna short stroke off, off the face here, um, you know, if a lot of people will like to short stroke off the release side of the, the piston. The only reason I don't do that is because it then limits you, this piston, to only this setup of short stroke of gears. And in most cases, it doesn't need it. These pistons are extremely light. You know, DSGs, I will short stroke the teeth down in saying that you don't even have to do that again. But the lighter of high, fast moving part becomes the better. So you want it to be nice and light. JB Weld. It's a two-part compound, it's just a standard JB weld. Grease, like I said, thousand weight, use it on my, my O-rings, everything. You know, I, I personally prefer to use brown O-rings. The brown O-rings work every bit as good as the green, just last a lot longer. So super consistent numbers. They're a high temp Biton diesel O-ring. They just keep going. They're, they're a phenomenal, phenomenal O-ring, especially in high rate of fire builds. And apart from that, gluing the rubber on, Tarzan's grip, shockproof, super glue. Problem with this is it's now discontinued. So trying to find it has been a bit of a mission. So I'm hanging onto this bottle of Grim Life. The Powerflex super, t uh, super glue Loctite works really well. I've been using that for years. Gorilla glue, you just gotta let that set for 24 hours and activate it with water. Works like a charm though. Just 
480 Loctite, um, that's pretty good too. You can use a lot of different things. It's more so got to be shockproof, stuff like that. Little nicks and wires, stuff like that. You can, you know, cut the wire, a bit of heat shrink over the top, things like that. If you don't want to go to that extent, liquid electrical tape will save your life. This stuff is amazing. Uh, just give it a full sort of half an hour, 45 minutes before you fire anything up through it and use at least two coats. In regards to shimming, um, I get quite a few questions about how I get my blasters to sound nice and I like to shim the half shell method. So the half shell method for me, I find works the best. It allows you to sort out your pin into bevel. Basically, you screw your grip down to the top half of your gearbox, uh, put your motor in, get it to the right height. Obviously, you've got your bevel in. Get your motor pinion depth to the right height, um, and then you can basically gauge from there if you need to shim up to the pinion, so shimming it up. Um, you want to get it to that point where when you're rocking it, you've got like 0.1 mil of rock. You don't want it too tight, you don't want it too loose. Um, and then basically, once you've got that sorted, closing your gearbox, getting your number, getting it down to 0.1 mil of movement, put your grip back on when it's fully, you know, your lower's on, put your grip back on, put your motor in, it should already be adjusted to the right height, and then through the side here, just basically see that you've still got that 0.1 mil of movement. If you've lost that 0.1 mil of movement, a lot of the times it'll come down to, you know, your motor holding your, your gearbox, uh, the motor being held on, on a funny angle um, due to the grip. Sometimes it can be, like you can see here, I've like cornered off through here. You only have to do just above where those two guides are. So basically just corner it off um, so that it doesn't touch the outside of the gear over the bushing at all. Um, and it can also be the fact that this piece on certain motors, that see how it's all flat, that piece kicks up. Sometimes it's that piece is too long, so just trim him down just a little bit, um, but you should be able to see your motor height adjust up and down. That's, that's in pretty rare cases that that needs to happen. Um, it's not very often that that needs to happen. Another thing will be the hole here for the motor shaft. Basically, I like to do it anyway. I just very lightly run a radiusing bit around the hole there just to make sure that the grip isn't, the motor isn't, the shaft isn't being pushed on a certain angle. And every motor is different. You, you're just going to have to play each one by feel um, and by eye. So that comes down to a lot of it. And I, I leave that 0.1 mil of movement on each gear. Um, another thing to sort of look out for, put your boot, put your gear in. Real gears won't wobble around in good bushings. So you should be able to spin it and see that there is no gear wobble. It's it's literally just spinning beautifully. Um, that's also got a point three under it, so it's you know it's not wobbling or anything like that. Um, but make sure once you've found your magic number and you've got your point one mil of play, make sure that your sector make sure that your these gears won't mesh with this, but make sure your sector when it's actually on there is high enough that it's not just point 0.1 because when the gearbox comes under pressure and say for example this has point 0.1 mil of play up and down and this moves point 0.1 up and that one there it, it basically will rub two faces will rub so yes you want your teeth to be as close you want your gears to be as close together as possible to maximize meshing but come too close, it might look good under eye, like you might look at it and go, oh, it's got the ever so slightest little gap of the sector sitting above the spur. It looks beautiful, spins beautiful, not a problem. You put it in the gun, you get a slight wisp to it. It's because this gear here is riding up ever so slightly and rubbing on the sector. Same thing goes with the spur to the bevel. Um, you, you don't want that gap to be so tight for the meshing that basically you know, you can see through it, you can shine a light through it, it's not a problem, they're not touching, but under pressure, it all rises like 0.1 and sort of moves around a bit and causes a, a premature rub on each other. So you want to be careful of that. That's another big thing to sort of look out for. If there's any questions you guys have or anything you guys want to know in particular that I could possibly help out with, don't hesitate, but leave a comment. I'm more than happy to help. For me, there's two ways to get torque in a gearbox and speed. 
the most common way would be to get a torquey motor, high speed gears, and, and get your RPS through that way. Um, other people like to do a high speed motor, you know, 16 to ones or 18 to ones, more of, you know, standard torque sort of style gears, um, and get it that way. I find it chews a bit too much battery, the low TPA armatures, high torque setup versus, and high speed gears, just more efficient, less motor grip, uh, less motor temperature, uh, longer battery life, things like that. I, it's For me, that's my personal opinion. So it comes down to whatever you want to do, go right ahead and do it. Um, but you can't just have speed, speed, high FPS. You need like torque, speed, uh, things like that. So just be aware that there is sort of formulas. Hot groups come down to like a shimming. There's resistance in the gearbox. Or there could be resistance in the armature and you're using a big battery just to force the armature to turn over on a high speed armature with say 12 to ones with like an M130 spring. That blaster is not gonna like what you're doing to it. It will run, but you are going to run into a lot of problems. So just be aware of that. That's another thing I talk to a lot of people about. Um, it's pretty much that. So gearbox alignment, you know, your actual alignment in the receiver, your alignment with your nozzle to T-piece, your alignment with your motor to grip, making sure that's all in place, lock tighting gears together or JB welding them together, JB welding your rack in, letting it fully cure, you know, lock tighting your piston heads on. Um, these are all things that can help sort of prolong the life of your gearbox, um, but it doesn't make any guarantees. It just, it helps a lot. Also too, I wanna to talk just a little bit about timing of a gearbox. So I mentioned like short stroking your sector, things like that. So for example, Say somebody wants 50 rounds a second. All right, now we have to achieve that number with a certain amount of torque, you know, and a certain battery, certain voltage, things like that. So on an 11 volt, say 40C EU, you know, I'd say go 10 to ones on a 36K, and it's gonna yield about that, depending on what sort of spring that we decide to put in. It'll yield between, say, 40, 44 and 51 RPS. Um, just depends on the spring size but just be aware that if you do go too small a spring that those gears are spinning so fast that basically what's happening is this piston has to travel all the way back with the sector and then the sector lets it go piston fires but if you're using too small a spring and that sector spinning faster than this piston can return you'll end up getting damaged through all of these teeth here so all along sort of you know these teeth here so you've got to make sure that you can't just say, oh, I want 300 FPS, 50 rounds a second, um, and then go and shove in, say you've got an 18 centimeter barrel and you think, oh, I'm gonna put an M100 in there, that should crack me the 100 FPS. Basically, you're gonna get like a, like a rattly sound happening, like where it doesn't sound like the cycle's fully completed and clean, um, because the sector will be picking this piston back up before it even hits the front of the box. So you'll end up in like an FPS loss or what's called a, a, a compression droop um, on full auto, which comes down to also timing of your tappet and trimming your tappet and bending coils over on your return spring and getting it to reset faster. That's only if you're not using an Apache. Um, but when it comes down to timing, you want your piston to fully reset all the way forward before the sector comes around and picks it back up. You got timing of your tappet. You want your nozzle to fully seal in your T-piece before the sector comes and picks it back up. And this is where short stroking plays a big part because say for that 300 FPS 18 centimeter build and he wants 50 rounds a second, uh, the 50 rounds a second is not a problem. Getting it to run efficiently at 50 rounds a second through getting enough torque in the setup to not give hot batteries, to not give hot grips, make all that efficient, then through your gearing, your shimming, the resistance in your, in your shimming, and then moving on to the timing of either your tappet or your piston. I would then say put like an M110 or an M120 in it and short stroke the teeth of the sector down, um, which will also play a part in voluming. So obviously you can't short stroke barrel, you can't short stroke too much on say 40 plus centimeter barrels. The shorter the barrel, the easier it is to uh, achieve that number um, and that, that rate of fire, but the harder it is to get FPS up. So you gotta be, it's, it's a balancing act between how many teeth you short stroke as to what spring you're using as to what RPS you're trying to achieve. So you need to sort of find that balance on, on what you're trying to do, what you're trying to achieve. Um, and it may require an M110 or maybe even an M120 to, to say sit on 300, 300 FPS at 50, 55 RPS. 
if you're not going a DSG, the, the easiest route is to go to a DSG after that because, you know, FPS being around that 300 mark is quite easy to achieve on that rate of fire because you're using a big spring and it's only pulling back the piston halfway. So when it releases the piston, the sector still hasn't picked it up yet. So timing actually is a lot easier on the cycle part, but when it comes to the tapper plate and the return spring, that's where DSGs are a lot of fun and which is why I come up with the idea of doing the Apache was because I got sick of timing tappets and shortening return springs. So um, they do help a lot. They come with their own set of issues that you need to tune out and stuff like that, but um, certainly a lot easier than say getting 320 fps single shot on your dsg and then switching to full auto and getting 290. Um, that's just a compression droop because your, your sector is still holding your tappet and then as it releases that nozzle hasn't sealed all the way forward yet before the sector picks it back up but if you trim too much off your tail off your tappet you'll lose your feeding altogether so there's there's timing of a gearbox as a whole separate kettle of fish and getting things to run perfectly and all that sort of stuff is pretty hard to do when you know, you consider that the average gel baller goes through about, you know, two to 5,000 rounds a game. So they also come down to how you use it as well, but you can do all these things and, and still run into problems. And that's just the nature of manufacturing and, and R&D design and any product or any brand. So I hope you guys learned a couple of things from this. Um, and if you did, then, um, you know, give the video a like, leave a comment. Um, let us know what you want to see next. I will be putting out a lot more content, uh, more builds, more parts, things like that. So there is a lot more coming up. There's big things coming up in the pipeline. Do it your way. All the props to you. If this can help you at all in the slightest, then go for it. This is just a, a moderate sort of chat. Um, it's not an in-depth sort of expert advice stuff this is just for the people that are given a gearbox a crack themselves um and they're putting their their blaster together i just don't want them just putting things together shimming it and then running into problems so just happy to help and that's what it's all about but yeah guys if you like the video thanks a lot cheers guys